Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Gaffer and Gear. Today I'm going to talk about loading up a three-phase box. Now what's important is that you try and get as close as you can to having the same amount of power running off each phase. So for example, let's imagine we have um, three lights, let's say they're all M18s or 2K Blondies. What you'd want to do is try and have one plugged into phase one, the second one plugged into phase two, and the third one plugged into phase three as opposed to having them all running off the same face. So why is that important? Well, I'll give you a story as to why it's important after the intro. All right, so very, very quick story. So um, uh, about six years ago, there was a low budget feature being shot in a studio in Melbourne, and they were shooting for six and a half weeks and they rented a three-phase box off me and a three-phase power cable. So um, basically, uh, what we did was we had a three-phase outlet, we plugged the cable into it and ran that out to the three-phase box. So basically the cable was sitting flat on the studio floor, running between the outlet and the box. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Now, I get a phone call from them about four and a half weeks later. They're, they're absolutely irate, going crazy at me because uh, they can't film anything. And it's all my fault because my cable apparently has shrunk. And I said, what do you mean the cable shrunk? Cables don't shrink. You don't put them in the washing machine and they come out two sizes too small. That doesn't make any sense. And they absolutely insisted that the cable shrunk. It's all my fault. So I said, look, I don't know what's going on, but I'll head out there immediately with a replacement cable and figure it out. So basically when I got there, this was the scenario. Here was the wall outlet. Here was the three phase box and the cable was now coiled up like this on the floor and didn't make the distance. So basically, it had coiled up like that instead of lying flat. So what happened that caused that? So what made the cable coil up was the fact that they had all of the power running on one single phase, and phase two and phase three had nothing on them. So they had the box completely out of balance. So how does that make a big cable like this kink up? Well, basically, this big cable inside has five other smaller cables in it. So we won't get too complicated with it. What we're going to talk about is the cables or the cores that basically supply the power to the outlets or the actives. So we've got one cable for phase one, so that's in inside here, a second cable for phase two, and a third cable for phase three. Now, these internal cables or cores are made out of metal. That's what conducts the electricity. Now, when electricity goes through the cable, it heats up the cable. So basically, metal, when it heats up, expands, and when it cools down, it contracts. Now, if you have your three-phase box equally balanced, so the same amount of power on phase one, phase two, and phase three, basically what happens is those three cores expand and contract the same amount. Now, in the situation here, where they've got everything loaded onto phase one. Okay, so that one's got all the power going through it. These two other cables, the other two cores, have nothing going through them. So they don't expand and contract. Whereas the one phase, the one core, that has all of the power going through it, expands and contracts. So instead of all three cores expanding and contracting at the same rate, two of the cores are not moving, so I keep these two still, and we'll push on this core just to expand it and see what happens. So as you can see, it kinks the cable. So look, if you can't get your three-phase box perfectly balanced, it's not the end of the world. But uh, in this case, why it was so bad is because they had 50 amps on phase one, nothing on phase two, and nothing on phase three. Six days a week for four and a half weeks. That was the deciding factor. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a tip to help you keep track of uh, what your load is on each phase. So I'm going to give you a simple example. So let's say I'm going to run a big light, like say a Studio 5K or a, uh, or a 4K HMI. Now that's a big light for me, they're, they're the biggest lights I've got. Well, the big lights plug into the bottom. Okay, so the bottom row is for the big lights. Now let's say I'm going to plug in a medium sized light, which for me is something like a Blondie or an M18. Well, the medium-sized lights plug into the middle row. Now, if I'm gonna plug in something that's insignificant, so something with a small amount of power draw, like say an LED panel, 
Well, I plug those into the top rows. So basically when I have a look down this phase now, I know I've got a small light, a medium light, and a large light plugged in. All right, so one last tip before we go, your three phase outlet will have a rating on it. So you know, 20 amp, 32 amp, 50 amp, 40 amp, they're the most common ones in Australia. Now that amperage refers to how many amps there are per phase, okay? So if you've got a 32 amp three phase outlet, you've got a total of 96 amps. So that's something that's worth knowing. I didn't know that when I started. I'm Andrew Locke, see you on the next episode of Gaffering Gear. Now, just in closing, there, there is something I wanna say, and that is if, if you're the sort of person that um, you know, has a power cable, single phase, three phase, whatever, and you notice it starts to deform and you don't do anything about it, you shouldn't be in the lighting department. You shouldn't be in any department that uses electricity. You know, as soon as you notice anything going wrong with a power cable, it needs to be taken out of action and the cause needs to be investigated.